My name is Eric Kazarian. I am an otolaryngologist, head and neck surgeon, also known as an ear, nose, and throat doctor, and one of the relatively few surgeons in the world that specializes in surgery for snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. In this video, I discuss some simple things that you can do to stop your snoring, and that can also help in milder cases of obstructive sleep apnea. I have other videos on snoring surgery and many other aspects of surgical evaluation and treatment of snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. I hope you enjoyed the videos and my website where you can find even more information on snoring and sleep apnea. Snoring is extremely common, affecting probably over 100 million Americans and many more around the world. So people ask me all the time how to treat it. Like any doctor, I always start with asking some questions to obtain more information. How often and how loud is the snoring? There is a great saying that snoring is in the ear of the beholder, meaning that snoring may only be a problem for some people if it is very loud, whereas others may just be light sleepers and disturbed by even soft snoring. It can be helpful to know how loud the snoring is and to track it through various treatments. One way I like to track snoring is to use one of the many available smartphone apps like SnoreLab that do a pretty good job of measuring how loud a person's snoring is. Another question is, is there any choking or gassing for air during sleep? Finally, what makes the snoring better or worse? Whether sleeping on your back, drinking alcohol within three hours before bedtime, recent changes in body weight, being especially tired, or blockage in breathing through the nose. Some of those questions help guide treatment, and some provide a general sense of how worried I am about obstructive sleep apnea, a more serious condition that involves not only snoring, but blockage in breathing. With that in mind, here are some options that can stop your snoring. Sleep on your side or stomach instead of on your back. Many people have much more snoring and even can have obstructive sleep apnea when sleeping on their back compared to sleeping on their side. Often, either a loved one or your smartphone app can tell you how much of a difference sleeping on your side or stomach can make. There are various pillows and devices out there to help people stay sleeping on their side, but often, I just recommend that people wear a t-shirt to bed with a pocket sewn on their back between their shoulder blades that will fit two tennis balls. This basically makes it uncomfortable for someone to sleep on their back so that if, for example, their shoulder gets sore while sleeping on their side, leading them to roll onto their back, the tennis balls are uncomfortable enough to make them roll over to sleep on their other side without staying on their back. The challenge sometimes is that even if sleeping on your side or stomach makes snoring better, you may not be comfortable sleeping in that position because of habit or because it hurts your shoulder, hips, back, or somewhere else. Avoid alcohol within three hours of bedtime. Drinking alcohol in moderation is not bad, but alcohol can interfere with getting deep, quality sleep and also relax muscles in your body, worsening snoring and even causing sleep apnea. Think of sleeping as somewhat like driving. You want the alcohol to clear out of your system before you go to bed, so a good rule of thumb is to avoid drinking alcohol within about three hours of bedtime. Avoid most sleeping pills, including many over-the-counter antihistamines. Many sleeping pills relax muscles and have negative effects on snoring and sleep, similar to alcohol. The antihistamine diphenhydramine, which is the generic name for Benadryl, is an active ingredient in many over-the-counter remedies advertised as sleep aids. This can actually worsen sleep and snoring, surprisingly. Not all sleep aids are bad for snoring and sleep quality, but it is good to ask your medical provider if you are not sure. Lose weight. This is especially important if your snoring started or worsened substantially with weight gain. Of course, losing weight is always easier said than done, so for people who have been unable to lose weight easily, I tell them to continue trying, but also discuss other treatments that they can use while they are losing weight. Make sure you are getting enough sleep. Snoring tends to be worse when people are tired, so make sure you get enough sleep. When you are tired, there is a natural tendency of the body to want more deep sleep, and during deeper sleep, the muscles in your body are more relaxed. 
This leads to more snoring or possible blockage in breathing, which is the issue with obstructive sleep apnea. If you are able to get seven to eight hours of sleep on a typical night, your snoring should improve. Make sure your pillows are helping you or at least not hurting you. There is no special pillow to buy to end snoring. I tell people to get one that is comfortable for them and just to pay attention to the way your head rests when you sleep. Tilting the head forward worsens snoring for most patients and tilting the head backwards can have the opposite effect. Pillows advertised as snore pillows typically tilt the head backwards and can improve snoring in some people, but there is no reason to buy these if you can just use your own pillows properly. The bottom line is that using large or too many pillows may be soft for your head, but bad for snoring and breathing patterns. Make sure your pillow keeps your head tilted slightly backwards or in a neutral position. Sleep with your head elevated. Some people notice major benefits to sleep in a recliner, on a foam wedge, or even with a few pillows arranged to form an incline similar to a wedge. However, this is often not comfortable or practical as a long-term solution. Avoid dehydration. Dehydration leads to thickened mucus in the mouth and throat, which can cause the surfaces inside to stick together and cause or worsen snoring. Snoring sprays, which do not work for most patients, are mainly oils that reduce this tendency for sticking together. Drinking enough fluids during the day can reduce snoring in people who are dehydrated, although I do not recommend drinking a large amount right before bedtime because you will wake up from sleep to use the bathroom. Be able to breathe through your nose. Mouth breathing worsens snoring and breathing patterns during the night. Often mouth breathers simply cannot breathe through their nose, so it is important to open the nasal passages. Common causes of blocked nasal breathing include allergies, a deviated septum, and enlarged inferior turbinates, all of which require evaluation by a medical provider to discuss treatment. However, there are two causes that patients can treat themselves, and I discuss them next. Watch the outside of your nose while breathing. Some people have collapse of the sides of their nose when they breathe. You can tell if this is the case for you at home by watching yourself in the mirror while you breathe through your nose. People with marked collapse can respond well to external nasal dilator strips. The most common ones are breathe right strips. There are also relatively simple procedures that can be done in the office or operating room to produce some of the same effect. Stop smoking. Studies show that smokers are more likely to quit smoking if their medical provider tells them to do so. So, if you smoke, please stop. It will be the best thing you can do for your health. Smoking causes irritation of the lining of the nose and throat, and quitting can also reduce your snoring or eliminate it entirely. Evaluation from a medical provider. Sometimes using these conservative approaches is not enough. An in-person appointment with someone who specializes in treatment of snoring and sleep apnea can help determine which of these makes the most sense for you or whether other evaluations are appropriate, such as a sleep study to test for obstructive sleep apnea. We can also discuss appropriate treatments from among the wide range of medical and surgical options. I am a surgeon, but I use the full array of treatments for my patients who snore. This includes some relatively simple procedures that are performed in the office, and you can watch my video on snoring surgery to learn more about them. I hope you have enjoyed hearing about 12 simple steps to stop your snoring. Please do not hesitate to contact me with any questions or if you'd like to schedule an appointment.